la 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 la. <laughs> oh hey, hey, you're back. Uh, you're back and I know that you're here. And welcome to, this is, this is what is after, the After the Shadows, I know that. Uh, that's the show that I'm hosting right now, which is why you're here to watch. We got a doozy of a show for you, so let's get started. All right, guys, tonight's guest is the powerhouse behind all the Shadows wardrobe magic. Please welcome our lovely costume designer, Laura Montgomery. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be on your show. Well, for those that may not know, what's the basic rundown of your job on the show? Wow. Okay. <laughs> the basic <laughs> rundown of my job, uh, I guess it all starts with reading the script, um, figuring out what the costume requirements are for a specific episode. So it may be like you're getting dunked in water or sometimes there will be specific script notes about what a character has to wear. And then from that, it goes into, we do a lot of costume builds on the show. So it's a combination of shopping, renting, and then a lot of building, especially for our vampires. If it's a custom build, I'll start out sketching it. I find that that process just helps kind of work out some ideas on paper with a pencil and eraser. You know, you're not wasting fabric. You're just kind of figuring out, okay, will this neckline look better or worse? Um, and then we start building the costumes. We have fittings with the actors. And then once we get to set, it's a matter of making sure it all looks great on set. Pretty cool and awesome. And I, I love it. I personally love it. I got all dressed up for you and I wore this bow just for you. <laughs> Yeah, if I was there, we have to tighten it a bit. We have to do your finals. Oh. There, 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 there. Okay. Okay, see? I can't do anything by myself, guys. I still need Laura to help me look good on the show. But I really, really love that you're here because it's one of my favorite things to talk about is the costume. And the fans have been asking so many requests for you to come on the show. And we want to know, how did you get started, actually, in this? I think it was just a slow realization and a slow acceptance of, oh, this is what I've always wanted to do. I just never said yes to it. Even as a kid, I was I was always doing fashion, what I thought were fashion sketches, but in hindsight, they were costume sketches because I wouldn't just do the outfit. I would do like, this is the event that they're wearing it to, and this is this person's backstory. And then she would have, you know, my little figure would have all of these different outfits to wear which were actually costumes because it was like you know she's going to be playing tennis but then there's a snowstorm and so she's going to need a hooded tennis jacket and there was a whole story behind it speaking of sketches um can you share some of them with us right now and go through the process of each one of the characters and uh the ideas that go behind it so for the guide, um, mm -hmm. we had to build a whole closet for her this season. So she was one of the characters that I started with first because I knew that we didn't have anything to draw from in her closet, really. So starting with, um, we found this dress, Ooh. which was for the scene where she's coming in the fireplace. So I thought it's a wispy pleated tool and she comes in as a wisp of smoke. So I thought that the transition from wispy smoke to wispy tool would be really, um, would be really fun. What's another one? I know you had the nausea one. For her peacock for the kickball. That's one of my favorite dresses. Actually, when I saw Natasha in that, I was like, this is my favorite dress. Like, cause you also introduce uh, more of a color to the characters this season where in the past they've been really dark and always in blacks and whatnot. I don't know who told me this. It was either Matt or Kaven said that it came from Jermaine that they would always be in black or in darks because they're trying to hide at night, which makes a lot of sense. So we try to keep it dark for that reason. But I find in the mansion, the mansion is lit very darkly. So when we have everyone in black, even if it's like, oh, we do something midnight blue, or if we have some detail, it just gets lost. So I did really mm -hmm. try to kind of push it knowing that you would be outside at night all night I thought you know we can do something moody and gothic but it doesn't have to be black well Guillermo himself has gone through quite a bit of a change uh now he has his wardrobe change that well what do you think has been added as the season has progressed from the season one two and three the trajectory of his costumes what what do you think is happening to Guillermo I love that Guillermo is getting tougher in the first season, he was really, he still is a teddy bear at heart, I think. 
uh, but we had all the warm knits. They were very, you see somebody you just kind of want to touch him, you want to hug him. There's a cuddly factor to all these soft knits and the patterns as well. There's a dated feel to them. I don't know that very few of Guillermo's costumes, unless they need to be multiple, they're all vintage. So it's an authentic like 90s or early 2000s sweater, even some 80s pieces. But as Guillermo is learning more about his Van Helsing roots, in season two, he had the trench added, which was pretty tough and which was great for fighting because of how it swung and how it moved. And then for this season, I love that we've added the waistcoat. So you have your one waistcoat, which is in the navy wool. So it's a little bit softer um, texture. But then we also have the one in the leather which has that really cool, that bandolier at the back for the stakes, which is detachable. So the belt, as you know, feeds into those little slots at the side and then it clips underneath. And so you can wear the waistcoat on its own or when you need to go into battle, you strap on the bandolier with all the stakes in the back. And I think it's just really fun and tough and ready for action. Well, well the major question that we get getting asked on Twitter um, when, you know, people were going to know we're going to have you on the show is this really important one that we have to ask. And uh, I hate asking me because it's such a serious question, but what is it like working with me? <laughs> it's <ter> No, <laughs> it's <laughs> wonder. I think it is so wonderful um, <laughs> because as I've said before, you are really in tune with the character and then you're also really in tune with what looks good on your body. So you know when something needs to be taken in, you pay attention to the detail. So if it's that extra quarter of an inch, you know that that's what will look good on screen. So you're always really um, helpful in a fitting with that. And then you have, you always come to the table with your own ideas about Guillermo. And so it's a collaboration and I love that. Okay, well, I don't know, you probably have heard this, but we play a game on this show and I'm sure you've heard of a New York Minute, but this game is called In a Staten Island Minute, where we put 60 seconds on the clock okay. and you have to answer as many questions as you can uh, correctly as possible. Are you up for it, Laura? I'm up for it. Okay, here we go. Here's the first question. Okay, we get 60 seconds on the clock and here we go. What are the names of the two virgins Guillermo brought into the household in season one? A, Jenna and Jonathan, or B, Jeremy and Jenny? A, Jenna and Jonathan. That's right. In ancient Egypt, women wore hats of blank to disguise their body odor. A, seasonal flowers and herbs, or B, perfumed animal fat? A, seasonal flowers and herbs? No, perfumed animal fat. Speaking of hats, Laszlo's cursed hat is made of what? A, witch skin, or B, pig skin? A, witch skin. Correct. In Victorian England, widows were expected to wear black for up to how many years after the death of their husband? A, 10, or B, 4? I'd like to say 4, but 10 seems more punishing. I'm going to go with 10. You were right the first time. It's uh, 4. In season 1, Nick Kroll's character Simon the Devious can be seen wearing what color blazer? A, red, or B, green? A, red. Correct. Which ancient Greek playwright created specific costumes for actors to wear when they performing their tragedies? Sophocles or Aeschylus? Aeschylus? That's right. It was Aeschylus. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> These are good. These are really good questions. And you got most of them too. So we'll have to tally them up at the end of the season and see who our winner is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Laura, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all your lovely expertise and your beautiful, beautiful costume designs. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to tell the audience who watch what we do in the shadows? I would like to say to them, thank you so much for being fans of the show. Keep watching and look out for season four because we're about to start shooting it and it's really funny. That's right. Everyone say a good night to Laura Montgomery. Bye. Thank you so much, Laura Montgomery. She's amazing. You guys see the hard work that she does for the show. It's impeccable. We love her. And we're almost at the finish line here, guys. One more episode until we send off season three with a bang or a boom or a fizzle. I don't know. Who knows? Do you know? I don't. But what we do know is that we got a humdinger of an episode coming up for you for the finale and a double humdinger of an episode where we talk about the finale. So hold on to your butts. Nope, that's not, that's my head. Hold on to your butts and we'll see you next time. Bye.